Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, part two of my knife build for total beginners, no power tools required. Welcome back to part two of my no power tools introductory knife build. If you missed the first part, link in the cards and description so you can see where things started. But the basic idea is that we're building a really simple but pretty cool knife. In this video, we'll start by heat treating the blade that we made back in part one. Now this is exciting to me because as I alluded in the earlier video, I've done quite a few no power tool knife making builds in the past. And for me, the tricky thing was always heat treating, which generally demands pretty professional gear. But recently I made a video showing how to make a really simple, really cheap forge using two fire bricks and a replacement Venturi burner for turkey fryers that you can buy on Amazon. The forge is so small and light that you can take it apart, you can move it around the shop. It cost me about 50 bucks and took maybe three hours to make. I'll link to that video in the cards and descriptions. Back in the days before Forged in Fire, I used to have to explain heat treating in a lot of detail, but now most people understand the basic idea. I'll be heating the blade to about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, which in a sort of normal indoor location will be roughly cherry red. Once I get the steel to that temp and hold it for a few minutes, I'll plunge the blade into oil, in this case, peanut oil, which will cause the blade to convert from soft perlite to hard martensite. As you can see, the El Cheapo forge that I told you about earlier has no problem whatsoever getting the blade to 1500 degrees. And a quick scrape with the corner of the file demonstrates that the blade has in fact hardened. After cleaning the oil off with a solvent, I'll pop the knife into the only power tool you'll use for this video, a good old kitchen oven. Well, in my case, I'm putting it in my heat treating oven, but it works exactly the same way and your kitchen oven will work totally fine. Heat treating complete, it's time to clean off the crud from heat treat and then sand it to final surface finish. Pretty much the same procedure as before, but we'll go up to higher and higher grits. A little flattening on the surface plate, then I'll turn to the sanding block. You really want to give plenty of attention to the plunge line to make sure you haven't left any scratches there. That's the hardest place to work and the easiest place to neglect. Today I'll take this up to about 600 grit, going 120, 220, 320, and then finishing up with 600, which gives me a soft kind of matte finish. But that's completely a personal decision. If you like shiny, you can go up to 2000 grit, whatever floats your boat. There are plenty of even higher grit sanding products than that, if that's what you like. The final finish is put in with long, smooth strokes. This is really critical. If you stop or start halfway, you'll leave nasty little swirls and scratches that you won't be able to get out later. Gotta get it now. Next, it's time for the handle. In keeping with the no frills approach to this build, I'm not using fancy burl wood, figured walnut, curly maple, any of that kind of thing. Instead, I'm using this spalted wood that I picked up for a song from my wood supplier. This was literally just a big old hunk of wood from a pallet. They sold me this whole giant piece that I could probably make a hundred handle scales out of for 10 bucks. Now look, it may not be the nicest piece of wood ever, but it's got some interesting patterns and it cost me essentially nothing. As with everything in this video, the lesson here is you don't have to shell out a ton of dough to make something nice. If you find something nice, buy it, throw it in the back of the pickup truck, whatever, then keep it in your shop for a while and you'll always have a supply of nice wood. After sawing it into blanks, I'll use 60 grit sandpaper to flatten it out. You really don't want to shortchange this step. Use a ruler to make sure that your wood is dead flat. If you don't, it won't lay flat on the tang of your knife properly and it'll leave ugly gaps. 
I'll begin by sawing out a rough outline. A million ways to do this. You could use a scroll saw, jeweler saw. You can hack it out roughly like this. Doesn't matter. You're just trying to reduce the amount of filing that you're going to do later. Just jumping in quickly to remind you that if you're interested in picking up plans for the build with really detailed scale drawings, or if you just like what I'm doing here and want to support this channel, Patreon is where you can make that happen. All you have to do is support this channel at any pledge level, and you'll have access to this and a ton of other projects at patreon.com slash Walter Sorrels. All right, back to work. Now for the handle pin holes. In this knife, I'll be using simple brass pins to anchor the handle. Again, I'll use the bracing bit just because. If you're doing this at home, use a freaking power drill. They're way more accurate, less likely to cause grain tear out like this one did. Much better solution. But again, at least you know it can be done in case you're about to move to the wilds of Alaska and will be making everything in your life by hand for the next 30 years. Before mounting the handle scales, you always want to finish the front face of the handle. All the rest of it can be done later, but if you try to finish this part after you've attached the handle scales to the blade, you will 100% mess up the blade, so do it now. Now it's time to attach the handle. I'll use a two-part epoxy. In addition to the epoxy, we'll be using quarter-inch brass pins. You can buy these at any hobby store or metal supplier and cut it to whatever length you want. Now, there are a million ways to attach a handle. Even with pins, you can peen them on or just glue them like I'm doing right here. Peening is a little more secure, but glue, well, frankly, it's just easier. So we're going that route. You want the handle totally grease-free. A little scuffing with Scotch-Brite or sandpaper helps too. You can use really slow curing epoxies if you want, but most of the time I use fairly fast curing epoxies like this. With that in mind, you want to be organized so that all the stuff you need is at hand when you get going on the handle. Clamps, hammer, paper towels, a solvent like alcohol for cleanup. Also, test everything out before assembly. There's nothing worse than having pins that don't fit through the holes while your epoxy's hardening up on you. So, now it's just a matter of slathering the epoxy on and spreading it around. Make sure you get plenty on the pins. Don't overdo it around the front edge, though. You don't want tons of glue squeezing out onto the blade if you can help it. Then clamp her up. There's always some squeeze out though. I'll use a small piece of paper towel and a tiny bit of rubbing alcohol to clean up what little squeeze out there is. You don't want epoxy setting up on the blade. If you have much of it, it's nearly impossible to get it off without marring up the metal. Don't use too much alcohol though, or it'll wick under the scales and suck all that epoxy out, and that's no good either. After letting it cure for about 24 hours, I'll finish up the handle. I'm using a rasp in combination with a file. 
Important point, I'm aiming the teeth of the rasp towards the spine, not down toward the face of the scale. Again, it's easy to tear out big old chunks of wood if you go in the opposite direction. If you want to avoid flipping the knife in the vise, just turn the rasp around and work it backwards. Now to the finger holes. You can use a round file, a half round, a radius rasp, whatever. If you don't have those, a flat file will do in a pinch, working in with the corner of the file. Once you get close to the steel, swap out the rasp or file for your trusty dowel and sandpaper. Use a real heavy grit like 40, 60, 80, something in that range, and you can really make pretty quick progress here. Side to side to profile everything, then spin it to get a smooth surface finish on the steel. You can do this however you want, flat, rounded, thin, fat, whatever. Everybody has different taste in handles. In this case, I'll be giving the handle a rounded profile, which is kind of what I like in a knife this size. The rasp hogs off most of the wood. Then you can work the pins down with the file. Now back to the flat surface and 60 grit sandpaper again to finish radiusing the sides. You can run up through whatever floats your boat, 120, 220, 320, whatever, then finish by hand sanding with 600 grit. This high grit isn't really necessary for the wood, but you also have the pins to think about and this will give them a nice finish. I'll also break the edges for comfort, moving through various grits up to 600. Now for the wood finish. There are about as many wood finishes as there are knife makers, but for wood handled knives with relatively soft wood, especially ones with some figure, I tend to use tongue oil. Nothing magical about it, it's just what I like. It darkens the wood and it gives you a soft sheen without a whole lot of plasticky buildup like you'd have with polyurethane or something like that. Basically, just rub it on, let it soak in, then reapply several times over a few hours. Once you have the amount you want on, let it cure a bit, then buff it out with a soft cloth. Let's take a look at the whole progress of the knife. Pretty amazing you can do all of that without plugging anything into a wall. And here's where we landed. All that's left is to sharpen it up and start cutting. So if you're one of those guys who's been toying with the idea of making knives and just haven't gotten off the dime, look, this video is proof that you don't need lots of gear or money to get started. So what are you waiting for? No, seriously, what are you waiting for? Thanks for watching guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Dig in the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years. So I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards.
waltersorrelsblades.com.